Is it red now? Yeah, it is. Okay. So watch the commenter. All right, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Dominic Owen, and today I'm doing a great presentation on Cardinal Wing Bang Pong, and he's in the process of becoming a saint. Um, I'll start out with a, a funny story. Um, we wish you could all participate in that, so, mm -hmm. so who of you today would like to go to heaven? Please stand up. Okay. Stand up. Today or sometime, someday? <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you may be seated. <laughs> then who of you today would like to go to hell? Please stand up. <laughs> Nobody's standing, huh? Oh, I'm standing! Uh-oh! <laughs> oh, better sit down. Oh, but anyway, we're all called to holiness. We're all called to go to heaven. And Cardinal Wei Van Tong lived his life in that particular manner to the point that he suffered many trials of suffering. Everybody of us have a cross to bear in our life, but we're called to carry it to the end of our life. And his cross was endured in being in prison for 13 years and nine of them in solitary confinement during the time that the communists attacked our country. And um, he had ties and relationship with uh, uh, the president. The president of Vietnam at the time was his uncle. And so uh, because of that, he was put into prison. He was uh, capture and put him to prison on the Feast of the Assumption. So this is a little brief synopsis about him, and then we'll start the movie about him. But we'll start out with a prayer. You all have a prayer card. Um, this prayer is to pray for his beatification. His, his cause for us, um, becoming a saint is uh, just happened around 2007, I believe. Uh, hope Benedict the Sixteenth um, opened up his cause, so he is now considered servant of God, which is the first step of becoming a saint. The next step would be venerable, then beatification, and then canonization. So, all right, we can start with this prayer. Almighty and eternal God, Father, Father Son, Son, and Holy Spirit, Spirit I offer thanks, thanks for giving to the Church, church the heroic, heroic testimony of Cardinal Francis Xavier Wing the suffering he experienced in prison was he united with the crucified Christ and commended to the maternal protection of Mary is for the church and the world a shining witness of unity and forgiveness and of justice and peace. His loving person and his episcopal ministry radiated the light of truth, the enthusiasm of hope, and the warmth of love. Now, my Lord, through his intercession, and according to your will, grant me the grace I am imploring and the hope that he will soon be elevated to the honor of sainthood. Amen. Although there are many people in this world that have inspired me to become a saint, Cardinal Wing Bang Tong is at the top of my list. This is the year of faith, and I believe strongly he is a great example of a person who has lived a life of faith. He was in prison for 13 years under the communist regime, but his faith was never shaken. He never lost hope. He even wrote a book called The Role of Hope while he was in prison. Today I will tell you about him and why he is my hero. And in the end, I believe he will become your hero as well. First of all, a little bit about him. He was born in Hue, uh, which is the Midwest region of Vietnam. Tung joined the seminary at Ang Ninh and was later ordained a priest on June 11, 1953, by Monsignor Jean Baptiste Urutia. After six years of further studies in Rome, he was appointed in 1959 through 1967 as a faculty member and rector of the seminary of Najang. 
He had eight brothers and sisters, himself the oldest in the family. He was bishop for Najang for eight years. While he was bishop, he increased the number of seminarians in his diocese. It started out with, when he first came, 42 students were in major seminary, which, but it increased to 147. There were 200 in minor seminary, and it increased to 500. Big changes. He was also one of the founding members of the Catholic radio station, Radio Veritas in Asia, Man Man Manila. His achievement in his diocese led him to be named advisor of the Pontifical Council of the Laity from 1971 to 1975. While he was an advisor, he had the opportunity to meet with blessed Pope John Paul II. The Pope told him about his personal pastoral experience under the communism regime in Poland, which Tung quickly related to. Because Vietnam was also under attack by communism at the time. He was also appointed advisor then member of the Congregation for the Evangelization of the People and the Congregation for Divine Worship and the this discipline of sacraments. The Congregation for the Evangelization of the People also entrusted him with the responsibility of visiting and overseeing the seminarians in a number of countries in Africa. His life was blessed, but in life, everybody, including ourselves, has to endure a cross. And his cross came on April 24, 1975. He was appointed co tutor Archbishop of Saigon. Six days later, Saigon fell to the North Vietnamese Army, and Tuong target for his faith, as well as his family connection to Ngo Dinh Yim, the president of Vietnam <coughs> before the communists overtook our country. He was detained by the communism government of Vietnam into a re-education camp for 13 years nine in solitary confinement. While he was in prison, he thought of, from the very first moment of his arrest, the words of Bishop John Walsh, who has been in prison for 12 years in communism China. It came to his mind that on, on the day of the, his rubber, liberation, Bishop Walsh has said, I have spent half my life waiting Mainly, Bishop Walsh was also in prison in China, and, and he was waiting for the day to, to just be free. All prisoners include, uh, as um, Tuong later said, all prisoners, including myself, constantly wait to be let go. <clears throat> but he decided then and there that his captivity would not be merely a time of res resignation, but a turning point in his life. He thought of St. Paul and how St. Paul would write to his congregation. And so he decided to do the same thing. He had a little boy who was coming home from Mass smuggle some old calendars so he can use to write his rough draft of his book so he can write to his congregation so he can continue to talk and communicate with his congregation. And so he decided to do the same uh, throughout his, his entire time in prison to write this beautiful book called The Road of Hope. In this book, he wrote about many different aspects about how we can live for God to the fullest. He emphasized on what faith is. He says that faith must be put into action. And faith is not like a tack you wear in your clothes that you just have and don't even notice that you have it. Which is true. I buy my clothes and then we're paying attention to the tag sometimes. He says to know faith, you have to know where your faith is. <clears throat> You have to know where the role of hope begins in the soul of the Apostle. 
starting with St. Peter, and where the road to death is in this life. He also quoted sacred scripture saying, Faith is expressed like St. Peter who says, My Lord and my God. Or St. John who says, You are the Christ, the living God. He quoted Jesus when he said, Faith moved mountains. He expressed the importance also in his book of the Eucharist in his life and how it should be important in our life. He says that the Mass makes up the Church, and the Church makes up the Mass. He said that if we want to praise God, to thank Him, to ask Him for help, to express your love for Him, to save souls for Him, we should go and attend Mass. He also wrote a whole section about Mary, and how much he loves her, and how much we should love her, and pray the rosary daily. When he was put into prison, he had nothing in his hand, nothing but his beautiful rosary. And I always have my too, so. beautiful prayer. I am named after Saint Dominic, so Saint Dominic got the rosary from the Blessed Mother. So. He said that we must treat Mary as our loving mother, hold close to her in any time of trial, like a baby, who hold close to his or her mother for everything at every moment. For example, he said, if Mary were to take some medicine, he would take it with her. And if she goes to prison, he will go in with her. He says that Mary, yes, brought to us the greatest gift of all, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that Mary was entrusted to us at the foot of the cross. When Jesus says, Woman, behold your son. And to St. John, he says, Behold your mother. At that moment, we all became her children. Before he went to prison, he visited Lourdes and con contemplate what Mary said to St. Bernadette. When Mary said to St. Bernadette, I won't promise you happiness in this life, but in the next life. After he was put in prison, he took this message to heart and applied it to his life. After he was put to prison, because this life he had a big cross to bear, and instead of giving up, he continued to pray and believe that God will help him. Never knowing one day he'll be celebrating Mass as a cardinal in Rome with Pope John Paul II. So. After he was released from prison, he was later elevated by blessed Pope John Paul II to become a cardinal. When people asked him what kept him alive, and he would tell them it was the Eucharist, which is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. His sister Elizabeth, who was one of the speakers of the Eucharistic Conference, said that somebody was able to smuggle the bread and wine to him in a box of chocolate, which he used to celebrate daily Mass every day. He said that later on in prison, he was allowed to have a couple of things. So he said he wanted stomach medicine, which in reality, he wanted the Eucharist. And his congregation knew that. So they sent him a bottle labeled stomach, stomach medicine. And they put that with some hosts and a flashlight so he could celebrate Mass in the dark prison cell. He later wrote a book called The Testimony of Hope, where he says every night after 9.30 p.m., when everybody in prison went to sleep, he would knelt down and celebrate Mass in complete darkness with his flashlight and three drops of wine falling from it. He used the palm of his hand to celebrate um, to, to the three drops of wine in his hand. He later spoke to the callers of Cardinal during a Lenten retreat in the year 2000 and was rewarded at that time by Blessed Pope John Paul II with a gold chalice. 
He responded with grateful praise to the Holy Father, saying, 24 years ago, I say Mass with three drops of wine and one drop of water in the palm of my hand. I never would have thought that today the Holy Father would give me a gold chalice. Our Lord is great indeed, so is His love. The Cardinal had many great encounters with our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, before he preached this Lenten retreat. He was with the Holy Father during a War Youth Day in Mexico, where he preached in Spanish to 50,000 youth while he was in Mexico with the Holy Father. He had a great story about Pope John Paul II. Can you remember the Pope telling him after this War Youth Day that he was tired and that he was going to sleep. But that he was welcome to celebrate Mass with him the next morning. The Cardinal agreed and went to sleep. When the Cardinal woke up the next morning, he went to look for the Pope. But the Pope was nowhere in sight. Where do you all think the Pope was? Praying. Praying. Where, where do you think he was praying at? Have an idea, Francis? No. No. <coughs> Have an idea? Well, you can take a guess. In front of the Blessed Sacrament? Absolutely. Sure, yeah. Yes. He soon learned that the Pope had spent the whole night in church praying before the Blessed Sacrament. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> Nguyen Vang Thuong was later elevated to Cardinal by blessed John Paul II, and after his death, Pope Benedict XVI opened his cause for beatification. On September 16, 2007, the fifth anniversary of the Cardinal's death, the Roman Catholic Church began the beatification process for Nguyen Vang Thuong. Pope Benedict XVI expressed profound joy at news of the official opening of the beatification cause. Roman Catholics in Vietnam had also positively received the news on beatification process opening for the Cardinal. In the words of a catechist from the Roman Catholic Church in the Archdiocese of Ho Chi Minh, Wing, Wing Wang Tuong is an example of holiness for Vietnamese Catholic and for the entire world. In his 2007 encyclical, Spesavi, Benedict XVI referred to Tuong prayer of Pope saying, during 13 years in prison, in a situation of seemingly utter hopelessness, the fact that he could listen and speak to God became for him an increasing power of hope, which enabled him after his release to become for people all over the world a witness to hope, to that great hope which does not wave even in the nights of solitude. Cardinal Wing Vang Tuong is my <coughs> hero because his life gives me hope. I have had many struggles in my life. I wanted to be a Catholic priest, a singer, and a teacher. But right now, all that vocation is still not very clear. For my singing career journey, I had tried out for two reality television shows on television, American Idol and X Factor. But it did not work out. For the priesthood, I did not pass a psychological test. I was placed in a three-year waiting period, which will end next year. During that time, I have tried to become a teacher. And as far as I know, that journey is not easy either. I look at the Cardinal's life, and I realize that life is a cross. And everybody has one, and we are called to take it up and follow him. In conclusion, there are many people that inspire me to become a saint. Cardinal Wing Vang Tung is at the top of my list. This is the year of faith, and I believe strongly he is a great example of a person who has lived a life of faith, <clears throat> being in prison for 13 years under the communist regime, but his faith was never sickened. He never lost hope. He even wrote a book called The Role of Hope, which I recommend all of you to, to, to purchase. It's a beautiful book. I, I read uh, over the summer, um, I read the Vietnamese version, but there's also an English version. This book was translated into many different languages after he was released from prison. So. While he was in prison, and he wrote this beautiful book, and that is why he is my hero. Cardinal Wing Vang Tung, 
I pray to you, we all pray to you, that we can all grow in holiness in our life, so that one day we can live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.